Good afternoon. Um, my name is Marcos Rendell, Mark Rendell, Marcos. Um, I work for Accenture, and I'm going to talk about um, a pattern we use with pipelines that we call integrated pipelines. And the background is that we typically work on quite complex uh, systems with tens of highly integrated applications. Um, so it's, uh, th this complexity um, is, is what kind of drives this pattern that we're using here when we're trying to do continuous delivery with Jenkins. So um, I'm guessing pretty much everyone here has a good grasp on continuous integration, continuous delivery. Um, but just to get us off on the same page, um, I mean, in practice, to me, it means that when someone checks in some code, we want to kick off uh, a kind of an orchestration of different automated processes, start validating the quality of the code. So we want to build it, make sure it compiles, some static code analysis, maybe that might be sonar, run the unit tests, maybe even do a deploy. And that's our continuous integration uh, pipeline, if you like. And continuous delivery is a great idea, and perhaps the logical conclusion of saying, well, let's say it's continuous integration and go all the way to production. And um, that's basically, um, well, that's, what, that's all you need to know to get started. So that idea works perfectly in a nice, simple, simple scenario like this. So we've got source code. We've got, uh, we can create an application package, a release of, the, of that application. Um, we can do loads of static, uh, we can do all our pipeline steps um, successively, more complex uh, quality gates and slower deployments into more production-like environments, and then deploy into production. And if we've got a PaaS, then we know that the environment, well, we hope that the environment's going to work, so we don't have to worry as, as much about that uh, configuration. And we don't need to worry about any other integrations. So we can have a nice pipeline like this. You start off, like I described, a CI pipeline and CD pipeline is the rest of the way to prod. So we're listening to one um, source code repo, or that's triggering our pipeline, and uh, we're, we're taking it to production from there. Problem is, uh, things get complicated when you've got lots of different components, and they're probably in different uh, version control repositories. They've all got their own um, quality gates and their own processes. They want to be tested independently. But it comes to a point when they want to be tested together. And when they've been tested together, you want to basically bank that configuration and know you're going to continue to test that configuration all the way to production. And that can be difficult um, to do, and it, it kind of starts to break the model. And the, another thing is flow. So we don't necessarily want to integrate um, different components straight away. It might cause people to actually not check in and go against continuous integration if they're afraid that their changes aren't going to be compatible with another component. So it starts to get a bit difficult. And uh, one solution is create what, what I call the fat pipeline. So let's get every software repo triggering one pipeline, uh, or listen to the, all the different repos if we want to do it that way around, and um, have kind of a monolithic um, process. Um, so let's have a look at what that looks like in Jenkins. So um, it's a contrived uh, example on my laptop. Um, and it's slightly hard to read, but what we've got over here um, is we've got a new version of the pipeline kicking off when we've got a new version of our Java web app, or when we've got a new version of our um, Solar, uh, that's an open source search product. The, the two different components, and, uh, and all the way down here, um, these different components are having changes, and that's causing our fat pipeline to run. Uh, and it's very slow, it's very unwieldy, and it will mean that um, and it's blocking, basically. It's blo blocking across teams. So one team checks in, they block everyone else. Again, like I said, they may not want to check in because of that. So it, it just kind of starts to break everything. Uh, so if we go back here. So the problem statement is basically we want to we want a continuous delivery pipeline, but in practice, the path to production involves carefully integrating lots of components along the way. So this is the this is the solution. So we basically we define two types of pipeline our CI pipelines that we've seen before, and we'll have one of those for each component, um, and then an integration pipeline, which I'm kind of standing in the way of. So, and we can have multiple of, uh, of, uh, of each type. But basically, 
whilst th things can be dealt with independently, they continue through the pipeline. Then they'll probably be deployed into, an, into a common environment where you've got both components. And if the tests pass in that environment, then we spawn an integrated pipeline and we move on down the, uh, down the process in kind of successively fatter pipelines. So let's have a look at Jenkins and, uh, and see how that might work. So here we've got a pipeline just for the Java web application. And we can run a build, uh, slightly, uh, again, contrived for the demo, but we'll just pretend we've just seen a, we've just seen a check in in our repository. And we get the, the normal uh, the steps uh, taking place. And these are all quite quick. They've all come from one team. And we're still doing nice continuous integration. Um, and let's say we, uh, we do the same thing with uh, Solar. So we've got our own pipeline. And uh, again, we'll just pick a random commit make it look like we've really done a change. Uh, and another pipeline can, can trigger off. So then we can look at our, and, and I guess a key point to mention here is that these stop um, quite quickly uh, when they're just testing in the system test environment, which is a common test environment. So they've effectively been integrated in this environment, and we've tested them. So now we're interested in banking that integration and having an integrated pipeline. So if I refresh here, uh, we should at least see one new, but we've actually got two. So we've, um, the Java um, web application has created a new integration build, which has added uh, version 21 of that component. And the Solar um, pipeline we kicked off has added 17 to the component as well. And kind of for the demo purposes, these things don't uh, flow straight through into production. So um, I left it like this so we can now trigger this, and, and it can kind of carry on to production. And again, it's about flow control. If you've got the um, quality gates to take you all the way to production, then um, you, can, you, can, you can do that. But in, in big um, setups, you may have some manual testing still, or you may need uh, some approvals to, to carry on through the pipeline. So this integration pipeline is, is continuing. And um, there's a couple of things, um, since this is a demo, um, to explain uh, how they work. Um, very quickly. So the first one is, uh, how do we stop this pipeline uh, from displaying all the jobs downstream? Sounds kind of trivial, but um, you do kind of need to pull a trick. Um, and the answer to that is um, groovy. So um, I'm sure there's other ways of doing this. Um, it's rather regrettable. Um, so we just have a groovy script, um, which um, the, the beauty of it is we can add some more logic about how we're actually calling it. And we also trick the pipeline, build pipeline view into not displaying those other jobs, because there's no way it can understand the groovy. So that's the first trick. Um, the second one um, is in this integration pipeline, which takes versions of, or c creates the composites, how do, we, how do we manage that? And how do we then deploy the, the right versions of Solar and the Java web, web application? Um, sometimes we use Maven and uh, POM files and Nexus for this, or sometimes we just use a uh, plain text file. But it's very simple. We just, we just append to this or, or amend this file when, when something gets added. So Solo went from version six, 16 to 17, and we, and we created a new version of the file. So simple trick. Uh, I could um, you know, send the code if you want to try this, or it's not quite making sense, but it looks like there's something good in there. Um, so that, um, that's basically... Um, I think the main things that I wanted to show about, um, about how it works. So the next thing, um, bear with me a second. So the next thing is, is basically how does this scale? And the answer is it scales pretty well horizontally. You can have multiple integration pipelines. It's hard to visualize, but it does scale. The problem, um, well, do microservices push it too far? Because we're going to get hundreds of components, potentially, microservices being very small units of, of code. Well, they don't tend to break it, even though it scales and they get really complicated. They don't break it because with microservices, um, they're allowed to go to production on their own. That's part of the definition of them. Uh, and that leads us to another problem, which has, been, which has come up quite a few times today, which is about templating. Um, now, I think I'm running a bit short of time, but um, very quickly, uh, we have kind of two template solutions that we make use of. Um, one of them is um, we have jobs which are disabled with the generic steps in there. And then we use the template plugin like this 
to call those steps and pass the parameters in. So the hard work, the stuff that actually differs between, for example, deploy system test, deploy pre-production, um, all the common stuff can live in a separate job, and then you don't keep deep copying that, and you can pass those changes through easily. So that's one trick. Um, and the other one is that, um, well, we create a Jenkins job for cloning whole pipelines, and the, the basic process is export the job config XML, update the parameters in the, in the job, and then re-import it using the Jenkins API. Um, and we always do that. We always export, update, and then re-import, because um, anything uh, we found, anything using Chef, uh, Puppet, that kind of stuff to manage these things, the infrastructure way, as just described earlier, suffers when that um, config XML changes structure. So if you keep getting it out of Jenkins, um, you're in quite a good shape. So that's how we deal with microservices. Um, very last thing, bonus use case. So treat your infrastructure the same. We're treating infrastructure as code. So give it the Jenkins treatment. And this pattern lends itself very well to platform components as well, um, because there's often quite a lot of them. And we do want to have a consistent version of MySQL, which could be a Chef Cookbook, RabbitMQ, which could be a Bosch release if we're using Cloud Foundry. Treat them the same way, and, um, and you get to have this, again, consistent, predictable results through releasing these composite, these tested composite components in a complicated world where it's not just one repo, one prod. I think I'm out of time, but um, thanks very much, and uh, please do get in touch for any of these channels, and uh, happy to share any of the things we've done here. Thanks. Thank you.